Hi, we're Shannon and Jerry Arner. And our dog, Betty White. Your hosts of the Arner Adventures podcast. Could we have named it something more creative? Probably. But it's the name of our blog. It's our last name. We're on an adventure. Yada, yada, yada. After running our own business, working 24-7. And don't forget a mental breakdown in between. We made a lifestyle change and decided to make the most out of life. We sold our house, most of our belongings, downsized, and moved to the coast. We live life minimally, but fully. We live each day as an adventure. This show will help you learn how to live life more fully, with more intention, by experiencing more, and with less stuff. We'll talk about our own experiences, interview others who have much to share by creating a spark in our lives. Some days we'll share real life ongoings of what we're going through and others will talk about our favorite flavor of waffle. Come join our adventure. It's, it's the, the Arner Adventures, Adventures Podcast. Podcast. Hello, everyone. I'm Shannon. And I'm Jerry. Betty White, our little love muffin, is hanging here with us. And we are back for episode 36 of the Arner Adventures Podcast. Today, we have a Spark in Our Lives episode with someone who lights a spark of positivity and creativity in our lives. But before we get to our guest, let's get to our review of the week. Today's review comes from Marlis56464. Marlis says, Honestly, I listen to a lot of podcasts, but this is the best one out there. This podcast is amazing, in caps, by the way. Keep up the good work. Oh, so sweet from Marlis. Boy, oh boy. I, I mean, knew I knew we were top three, but <laughs> the best? And is wow. amazing or in caps. Yeah. You gotta, so, you gotta like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Marlis. That is, and I think it's pronounced Marlis, but sorry if we got that wrong, Marlis, but we appreciate it nonetheless. And if you all would like to give us a boost of inspiration like Marlis did, please head over to lovethepodcast.com slash Arner Adventures and give us a five-star review or rating. You have no idea what it means for us to see those. It just lights us up. It is a spark in our lives, much like today's guest. You like that segue there? Oh, indeed I did. Well, today's guest is just a light. She is so creative with how she presents to the world. We talk about that. She is someone we resonate with in the fact that she makes her small space hers, giving it a vibe that she enjoys, her home, her sanctuary, and we just love her. Mm -hmm. Are you ready to just get to the convo? Yeah, let's go ahead and do it. We are so excited about today's guest. Our guest is Emily Offrey. Emily is a New York City nurse, mama, and wife. She loves chatting about all things home. She shares a colorful New York City skyline view apartment on the East River with her hubby, son, and pup, and more than 60 plants. You can catch her on Instagram making silly reels, sharing home tips and hacks, and good vibes. You may have seen her featured in Apartment Therapy, The Guardian, and most recently on Listed by Sturhan. What? I mean, that's incredible. Emily, thank you so much for being here. Oh my gosh, thank you for giving me the opportunity. And this is my first time doing a podcast, so thank you. Yay! <laughs> I remember our first time doing a podcast was, it was actually over the pandemic period. So we are... So excited to be your first podcast. This is yes, exciting you guys are like the cutest couple ever. So, <laughs> like, coming cute. from half of the other cutest couple ever. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> my favorite that was is when you're like, "What you got there, Jared? <laughs> <laughs> what you got at the bar, Jared?" <laughs> yes, that's my favorite. <laughs> We're still working on that pink drink of yours. We'll have to talk about oh, that. Oh, yeah, I forgot. I haven't had one in so long. I'm going through withdrawal. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, I get it. I completely get it. My new thing is the, well, it's not my new thing because I'm trying not to have it all the time is I happen to stop and I don't even go to Duncan a lot. I just happen. Mm -hmm. Gary and I were running some errands one morning and I hadn't had coffee and I was like, okay, let's go into Duncan really quick and get something. And we went in and because the drive through was too long and they had this, I'm going to completely mess it up. It was like a brown sugar cold brew. And I've seen the advertisement for that. Oh my God. It's good? It is. 
Girl, I'm oh, going right after this. To get my <laughs> mouth right now is just, oh, it's just like watering. It is amazing. And I'm so glad that I work from home because if I didn't and I was out and about, I would get it all the time. I think it's like, I mean, not that it matters, but I think it's like 180 calories, which is better than like a normal latte, you know? That's not bad at all. No, it's not terrible, but it's so good. But anyway, that's like my thing. And so I immediately came home and was like, how can I recreate this? How can I? I haven't. I haven't figured it out. I'm sure that someone can figure it out, but Jared can make like a nightcap version. <laughs> oh, yes, 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 yes. Well, are you coming to us from your tray chic boho apartment in New York right now? Right? Yep, I sure am. My dog is starting to bark. Morgan, stop. <laughs> is that how you would describe your apartment? That it's boho chic. I always want to say my style is boho, but I think it's got like other pieces mixed in. Like when I first started, I wanted some like vintage, oh my gosh, <laughs> vintage feel with it too. So the style is definitely boho. A few vintage pieces. I also want to say a little Afro boho too, because I have a lot of African prints. Mm-hmm. I don't think really chic is a word for it. Because I don't know, for me, chic is kind of like a little stuffy. And okay. I relaxation vibes here. Like you can just hang out, be yourself. Take okay. a deep breath. Okay. Okay. Keep on or off in my house. It doesn't matter. Whatever you want. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, we wanted to have you here because first we love your apartment. We love everything that you put out into the world. It's always positive, fun, good vibes. Like we said, you're so creative with your space and making a rental space yours and bringing your personality into it can be really tough and you do such a great job of it. So I want to dig into that topic a little bit more. First of all, you have a great apartment in one of the most popular cities in the world. So I want to know how did you find such a wonderful apartment in the wonder, most wonderful city in the world. Tell me how you found that apartment. I'm going to give you the long story, but I'll give you the little short verse in the beginning. Okay. I basically hit the lottery. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I moved to New York City in 2014 to be with my then boyfriend. Or yeah, my then boyfriend, now husband. And we live in the same neighborhood. And I remember seeing an article about the building I'm in now being written and it's affordable housing, which means it's like income based. And I was telling Matt, like, oh, this looks really interesting. He was like, immediately shut it down. He's like, no way, that's way too expensive, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, okay, whatever. I'm a big fan of like Facebook Marketplace. And I explained by nothing in the Listed by Sirhan episode, but I'll tell it again here. Most neighborhoods have a Facebook group called Buy Nothing and then your neighborhood name. And they're very strict about who they let in. Like they have like a map of who, like if you live within that circle on the map, then you can get in. And they like want your like cross streets. So I'm in the buy nothing group. I get a lot of my home decor from there. And I also give a lot away in that group as well. So I met a mom from that Facebook buy nothing group and she lived in this building. And I didn't realize that it was the same building at the time. And me, this is like the thing you don't do. She invited me into her home. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just so gorgeous. I came in. <laughs> I went to a stranger's home. I was picking up diapers. And she's like, I'm like, oh, this is so beautiful. And she's like, oh, it's affordable housing. I'm like, get out. Like, I really didn't believe her. She's like, yeah, it is. They're building another building right across or whatever. And I was like, oh my gosh, so cool. So from there, I was hooked. I was like, yeah. how am I getting into this building? So 2014, I read the article. 2015, the building opened. 2017 is when I met the lady that lived in the building. That's when my son was born. I was getting diapers. So I met another mom in the Buy Nothing Facebook group. And we like hit it off. We just started chatting on Facebook Messenger and we became really close. And she lives in this building. What? Yes. So I would come over, have play dates with her in the playroom in her apartment. And 
there's an amenities room in the building and she was kind enough to host my son's first and second birthday in the amenity building or the amenity room in the building. So like I'd already had really strong ties to the building before we moved in. So the lottery opened in 2015 and this is actually one of the largest affordable housing buildings in New York City. And so to get in after the initial lottery, you have to get in through the wait list. Okay. And the wait list was never open since I was trying to get in. Like for my income, it was never availability. But the pandemic happened. <laughs> And everyone in New York City was leaving in droves, fleeing. I had so many friends that moved to New Jersey and bought a house in the Burbs and left. So the waitlist opened up in, I think, July 2020. And this is like unheard of. I got called off the waitlist a month later, the next month. What? Yes. <laughs> and they want like every single piece of like your income. They want your Venmo. They want your PayPal. They want your taxes. They want your DNA. They want <laughs> right. Right. Everything. So like after like giving all those paperwork and everything, I took after a month, we were offered a unit and our current lease where we were before was up in November. So it ended up working out because it was like 90 days out. You could move in. So it just ended up working out perfectly. Oh my gosh. And my friend that I got really close with, she's my best friend. She actually transferred apartments. And so we're both on the same floor now. Oh my gosh. Uh, kids are two months apart. So we really have what? a lot of time. Yes, I know. <laughs> that is crazy. It really is. So is it a year lease? I mean, how does it work? I can pick between a year and two years. Okay. And how long have you been there now? It'll be two years this November. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Wow. It's amazing. And that patio and, oh, yeah. every time you post about it, I, I'm sorry. And this building doesn't have a lot of patios. So we got oh. lucky. You totally are lucky. Yeah. I'm like, I don't, I have no idea. I kind of feel like I manifested it really though. Cause like, mm hmm. Like, I have my son's first and second birthdays here. Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. And I have the pictures from those birthdays on our fridge. So I see those every day. And I'm like. Well, and I don't know. Okay. When you guys moved in, was your husband your boyfriend at the time still or your husband? Into this building? Uh-huh. So I moved here in 2014 and we got married in 2016. And then we moved here in 2020. So we were married by then. Yeah. Okay. And we learned on Listed by Sirhant that he proposed to you on that pier outside. What are the odds? <laughs> when he said that on there, because it was on that, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. When he said that, I just teared up and I was like, who else has that story that they could just look outside and go, look, I mean, I know. what? <laughs> So it, it, it was, it's like, it was manifested. It's like, it just kind yeah. of, and you know, out. I didn't really believe in manifestation until like maybe like the past year. Yeah. Me too. Same. Really? Yeah. This past year, this past year, I started really believing in manifestation and putting it out into the world, what you want. And, mm -hmm. you know, I still work on it, but I start believing it more and more because I feel yeah. like I see things happening that I want, that I want to happen. And I feel like I make it happen, you know? Mm -hmm. Can do yeah. anything for your mind to really. Yeah. Yeah. Oh so. my gosh. Well, I think one of the first things that you notice when you look at your apartment, of course, are your plants. And I am a big plant lover. So of course I noticed that you have over 60 and I name all of my plants. So I was wondering, first of all, do you name your plants and how do you remember them if you do? I do not name my plants. Okay. I thought I was going to, but I never got around to it. Yeah. I'm not as like, I don't know what the word is. Like I'm connected to my plants, but not like in the fact that I would name them. Yeah. But I think the vibe that they give. Yeah. Mostly. I don't know if yeah. that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, totally. Totally. Like what the, the vibe that they give you, like your space. So mm -hmm. do you have sort of like a care plan for them. Like, you know, for me. I try to be in the habit, like every Sunday, I go around and check them and all that. Like, do you do something similar to that for 60 plants? Like, I'm wondering how you keep up with them. 
Yes, I do. And, you know, I was thinking about making a reel for watering day. So, like, the last time, I think I watered them yesterday, actually. And I'm like, okay, let me time how long it takes to actually water all of these plants. And, you know, what? it didn't even take that long. And I love how you said, like, oh, we think about your plants. Like, for me, I don't even really think of, like, plants. Like, when I was, I was giving you my bio, I didn't even put plants in there at first. And <laughs> I was like, oh, wait, yeah. Like, I don't oh, know. It's yeah. Of my life that I don't even, like, it doesn't run. It just, I don't know. <laughs> wow. No, I think that's a big thing. I would think that that's probably one of the biggest things that people would think and see of you or your yeah, plan. Yeah, I agree. But I like for me, it's just like an everyday, like just part of my life. It's like a rug or like a, a pillow for me. <laughs> yeah. It's hot here, Jer. Oh, it's hot, all right. You gotta stay hydrated. We've been traveling so much, too, but it's easy to stay hydrated even when you're on the go and you don't have gallons of water by your side. It sure is, with the help of Liquid IV. Yep, Liquid IV is a hydration multiplier. It's a powder in a packet. You just throw a few of them in your bag and take them with you wherever you go. Yeah, yeah, it's a, and it's an electrolyte mix that you just add to your water. It delivers two to two and a half times more hydration than water alone. They have these really yummy flavors. Our summer go-tos right now are the strawberry and the pina colada. You know what I do sometimes is I throw a couple of packets of the pina colada, some ice and water in the blender, make myself a mocktail, hang out by the baby pool in the backyard. Oh man, I am good to go and hydrated. That's a good afternoon, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, getting creative. You're someone who either has trouble getting your water in or just wants to get in the express lane with your hydration. You should definitely try Liquid IV. For our listeners, if you go to their website, liquid-iv.com, and use code ARNERADVENTURES, you can save 25% off of your order and get free shipping. We'll link it to you in the show notes, too. Liquid IV, fueling life's adventures. Do you think if you were to walk into someone's apartment and they said, okay, you know, what do you sort of recommend as to you know what I need here if they didn't have plants do you think you would recognize that and say you need plants I would say yes I would definitely recommend plants but if they're not up to taking care of them I'm not gonna I'm not gonna yeah. push it. yeah got it got it like ready to do that yeah and I don't know if you're gonna believe this but I killed all my plants until the pandemic I'm a pandemic <laughs> <laughs> Well, my next question, my follow-up to that was, do you think that you have a green thumb? And then what is your keep alive to kill ratio? Oh, I love that. I keep alive. <laughs> You're a real plant parent because everyone that doesn't have plants or a lot, they're like, how do you keep them alive? How do you keep them alive? And it's like, no, they die sometimes still. Yeah. Yeah. So that's just part of having plants. They're it gonna is. Die. It is. It's a sad thing, but it happens. My plants alive to kill ratio maybe like 90 percent of them live okay okay yeah and oh, well, we had a question before that what was the question before that? oh would you say you have a green thumb i guess um, since, since the pandemic maybe yeah or do you before the pandemic i was over watering all of my plants looking back on it uh -huh. i would give them like three shots of water every day like <laughs> yeah yeah and like, I know now that if you do that, the roots are going to be wet too long and they're going to yeah. rot and the whole plant is just going to die. Yeah. Do you know Hilton Carter? Yes. I love him. Oh my God, he's my inspiration for this apartment, actually. I love Hilton Carter. And during the pandemic, he did an air, one of those Airbnb experiences. It was a virtual one. And I signed up for it where you could, he did like a Zoom class thing. And I loved it. I love him so much. And so I learned from that too, that I was overwatering. I just was like, oh my gosh. And I also learned one of the trick questions I think was so funny. And you probably know this already. He was like, <laughs> raise your hand if you have some plants that, you know, do okay. And no, 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 not do okay. That they like areas of your home that don't have light. And some of us were like, yeah, yeah. And he was like, wrong answer. They don't like it. They tolerate it, but they don't like it. They're having like slow death. <laughs> and I think about like my snake plant that I put kind of in an area that, cause I'm like, yeah, it does okay there. And I always think about it when I go to my snake plant, I'm like, you don't like it here. I know I should probably move you, but you're doing okay. And I'm like, I really should move you. So, <laughs> anyway. Yeah. I have a good tip for that actually. 
Okay. I don't know where I found this tip from, but I don't know. Did you see my bathroom makeover I just did? Yeah. Yeah. Have a real plant in there and there's no windows. So what is the tip? So every other day I bring it out to the living room. And in the living room, I have the same exact plant and I put that one in the bathroom. So what kind of plant is it? This is a birds of paradise. Okay. Like I know, well, I guess that's really only like my fiddle, like my fiddle leaf fig, my fiddle leaf fig would hate being moved. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Definitely certain plants. Certain plants. But okay. That's a great idea though. Okay. Nice tip here. (laughs) It's been doing well. Other than plants, what else do you say is something that gives your space like a good vibe? You know, I kind of just, I recently came into like my own style. Or I was like always trying to copy cat, you know, like the Ikea catalog or West Elm or whatever. And I am now picking out things that I genuinely like and I feel that have like good intention for my home. Mm -hmm. I think it's really up to the person that lives there to decide what is good. And it's really about like learning to be fully authentic too when it comes to like decorating. Yeah. If it's someone else's, design and you don't really resonate with it like how does that really going to give like a good vibe to your home I don't know I feel like people can probably pick up on that too that's a good answer Mm -hmm. oh that's such a good answer now that I'm thinking about it because yeah I mean what's a good vibe to me yeah it completely Mm -hmm. be different for you yep huh so okay well then I think this could be something that a lot of people would be interested in that you're really good at are, you know, you, and you put a lot of this on Instagram that I think are really great are some ways that you make changes to your rental space to make it yours, to have really great personality that are low budget changes. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering if, you know, you did mention the one about the Facebook buy nothing. So what are some ways that you recommend that people can make changes, low budget changes to their space. So for example, I'm sitting here thinking the light fixture change that you made in your son's room, which everyone should go look at that reel. It's amazing. But what other changes, because we'll talk about resources in a few minutes, but what other changes do you think that you can make to your rental space that are low budget? So also in my son's room, I just did a makeover in there. I did like a lot of DIY. So I guess that would probably be like affordable. I didn't want to buy a headboard. I don't know why headboards are so expensive. I don't get it. So I got this like orange peel and stick half circle decal. And a lot of people just think it's already a headboard. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I have that in his room. I also did like a DIY. I think kids rooms are like the funnest rooms to like decorate. Because it's like, it could just be like, so whimsy and like I just love like how innocent children are and it's like you can't go wrong really I feel in there yeah so I had a whole bunch of like broken picture frames I don't know do people have like broken picture frames a lot I don't know (laughs) yeah I do I just usually toss them but so I spray painted those and then I hot glued some like bendable wire on there and then now I put his artwork on it with like what are those things called a laundry clip what are those (laughs) clothespin (laughs) yeah yeah pretty affordable. I'm just using what you already have. And then for the bathroom makeover, I have these like basket wall decor on the wall in there. And I actually took those from my living room and moved those into the bathroom, like moving stuff from different rooms. And then in the living room, I put like some stuff that I had on my bookshelf onto the wall there instead. I have some like hands that are like circular and kind of make up for like that same circular piece I had there before. Yeah. Then I just put random stuff back on my bookshelf to make up for the space that I had taken off. Right. What else for venture friendly? I have these really amazing self-adhesive, strong, like hooks. They're like command hooks, but they're, it's not command. They can hold up to like 20 pounds. So I had put those on the ceiling because, you know, you can't drill in the ceiling. Yeah. I hang my planters from there, my hanging planters. Oh. And I also have, that's also holding up my son's basket lampshade too as well okay okay friendly oh I contact papered my son's Ikea cube shelf yeah I love that paper from the buy nothing group (laughs) okay 
I love contact paper. I think that's a really great idea. Yeah, and I contact um, my bookshelf, like the bottom of the shelves, I guess. You could also do the, the shelves too if you have a back. Yeah. Have you always been creative? Like you make a lot of the things in your apartment. <laughs> have you always been like that? I have not. Yeah, that's also recent, like maybe the past year and a half. Wow. Oh, I think that kind of came along with the plants. Like I did the plants and that kind of led me to go into more creative spaces. I'm from Ohio and in Ohio, like being creative is not really like seen as like cool, I guess. Yeah. All about the sports there. It's the football, right. It's the basketball. I was a uh, all state volleyball player. So I just played. Oh. I did track for a little bit too. So I played volleyball year round. I didn't do any art classes. I actually was terrible in art classes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. So, so it's just something you picked up recently. Huh? It's just something you picked up recently. Recently. And I also like dabble in like drawing a little bit here and there. DIYs around the house, I just love to do. It's just, and then the best is like, I always get all the supplies and then I'm like, I didn't start it. <laughs> I get right. like, it's for a DIY and then I don't do it. But then I see another DIY later. I'm like, oh, I have this stuff. So I can use it. Right. Oh my gosh. It's amazing. And all those tips are great. I do love the one. And I remember seeing it on the listed by Sir Hant, the headboard thing. And I loved how you said the room would grow with him. Yes. You know? Transition uh, as he grows. Yeah. I love that. Okay. Oh, so I, now I forgot to put in that episode that I moved his bed long ways so we could have more play space. Because I did originally have it like, I don't know, vertical or whatever, but I moved it yeah. for the wall. Yeah, oh, and yeah. the, uh, low budget. I have the headboard slip cover on my bed. That's right. Yeah, that was like super cheap, like $30. And I just, it's like a slip cover, like for a couch, and you just put it on your headboard. Bam. Which is brilliant. <laughs> and then you can change it out, like if you, yeah. for the season, if you want. I mean, you can do whatever. That's mm -hmm. a brilliant idea. See, I have all these things I just forget because <laughs> I really need to start writing all these down because I forget well, to share. <laughs> everyone can just go and follow you on Instagram and they're going to see all of this stuff anyway. So. <laughs> so listen, we're probably not the first to introduce you to the topic of CBD or CBD oil. If you're anything like us, it seems like every time you turn around, you're seeing a neon sign for CBD sold here at your local grocery store, in a window as you're driving by, or it flashes across your screen in an online ad. Shannon's sister told us about the benefits she was having from a brand she was using, and then we started paying attention to that brand. Spoiler alert, that brand is Danodan. Full transparency, we get about two to three CBD brands reaching out to us every week. And it wasn't until we started digging into the research that we learned that CBD isn't always CBD. They're just not all the same. Danadan Hemp Works makes organic hemp flower infusions. They're more than just CBD. Danadan's range of hemp products dissolve easily into any liquid and support your routine by helping you manage daily stress, promote healthy sleep, provide caffeine-free energy, and recover from activity-related stiffness and soreness. They also have CBD hemp flower infusion specifically designed for pets, and Betty White uses it every day. She loves it. We put it on our food. And with Danodan, you'll enjoy all the benefits of legal hemp, not just one or two compounds isolated in a lab. Get 20% off right now with the code ADVENTURE at danodan.com. We'll link it for you in the show notes. That's 20% off right now with the code ADVENTURE at danodan.com. Danodan, more than just CBD. So, okay, now talking about the resources. So I know we talked about the Buy Nothing group. Are there other resources that you recommend, like nuggets that you can share for budget saving? Depending on where you live, there's this website called Apartment Deco. It's A-P-T-D-E-C-O.com. And for New York City, this is great because they have like white glove delivery service because it's so hard to like oh. get items, you know, to your house. With I don't have a car. So, yeah, you know, I make my husband carry random stuff on the train. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I love that story. Yep. And Apartment Deco is black owned too, which I really like to support black owned business. Uh -huh. I bought like four or five things from them. I don't know if you remember that like vintage mirror I have in my living room. Yeah. Like the one that's from there. 
um okay. my is from there as well there's another website that's similar to apartment deco it's called kayo k-a-i-y-o and it's the same idea you can get it delivered and it's all secondhand furniture as well i love that yeah. i love that okay and then i use facebook marketplace a lot yeah i have a lot yeah. of stuff in, the, in my apartment from there and we'll share all those in the show notes as well. I've never heard of the Apartment Deco or the Kayo. I'd never heard of the Buy Nothing group until you mentioned it on the you list. Of you do it. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. So that it's those are all really great resources. Too. Okay, so we talked about your son's room and I love and I mean, you can see the responses from people on that listed by Sarah Hant, the comments of how I'm not alone. People love the things that you do about making sure that he is keeps this positive mindset about himself yeah. oh, is the most inspirational thing ever. And <sighs> you do that with the decor in his room, but like when he looks in the mirror and speaks this positive mantra. So I'm curious as to sort of where that comes from. Is, did you grow up that way or did you not grow up that way? If you, I mean, not to get too personal, but is yeah. that something you've always just wanted to instill in him or like, where does that come from? So I did not grow up that way. And now, you know, as an adult, you realize all these things like in your past. Yeah. And I'm like, you know what? I could have really benefited from this when I was younger. Yeah. And it's stuff that I do myself as well. Yeah. So like the mantra, I just love that. And you know, my husband's out of town this week and I, <laughs> I want to put this on my Instagram stories. I put up post-it notes all over the house of like positive things. Like one says like, you're a bad bee and like you're uh -huh. gorgeous and <laughs> take a deep breath. And yeah. I love, oh, I recently did that. I love that. I'm going to do that more often. I don't uh -huh. want to if I keep them up and he comes back. <laughs> oh, look, we have different things all over the, like we're talking about manifestation. We have different notes up all over the house. Oh, just different really? things. Yeah. And I, I forget about it until someone comes over. Oh. And, and I can see them sometimes, their eyes, I'll talk to them and their eyes are shifting around the house. I'm like, what's their problem? Like, what's going on? And then I realized they're looking at the notes around the house that says like, money loves me or, <laughs> or. <laughs> yeah. Or I feel safe or just different things. And I'm like, what is their problem? And then I go, oh, and then I have to say, so, you know, and then I'm like, I'm not going to get defensive about this. I'm just going to explain. Look, we have these mantras around the house. And then I explain it. And then I realize, then they go, oh, I should do that. You know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think you should leave them up. I'm going to leave it up. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'll make them a little cuter. They're like on random post-it notes and like yeah, it's yeah. It's spelled breathe wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I love that you do that for your son, and it, I think it's something that instilling in him young, I think mm -hmm. it's going to be great as he gets yeah. older. You know, now that like you know I'm being a little more creative, I realize how important it is to be creative. Like we're humans; we weren't meant to like go and sit in the office and work on a computer. Right. And I don't know who said this, but they're like, it's always interesting that the people that have like a lot of money, they typically do like really creative things. Like if they could do anything they want, they'll be like, I would be an artist or I would yeah. play the piano. And I, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That <laughs> positivity. And, you know, Jerry and I are always so intrigued by this. When someone has this positivity, that they put out into the world, which you do. And the reason I bring this up is, and I hope this isn't too personal, but like when you had, you know, I mean, look, being on social media, people, I made this as a joke, but I mean it for real, that trolls don't just live under bridges. Like they are, <laughs> they are alive and well on social media. And Twitter, Twitter fingers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> they come out of the woodwork at the times that you can feel so happy about something and you put this positive thing out into the world and these trolls will come out and just completely just try to sabotage it. And it also can be just one troll. And for me, 
one troll can just completely sabotage it. And I'm like, oh my God. And that's the one thing I can concentrate on. And I'm working on just like deleting it. I'm moving on and that's it. But it's hard for me. And so I'm bringing that up because, you know, you handle things like that so well. And you also just put out so much positivity. And I'm just always intrigued by people's mindset. And so I am curious as to where that positivity comes from. Like what motivates you? What is that mindset for you? Like, how do you keep that positivity going? So I just got listed by Sir Hand, and you know, we got some of the troll comments on that. And I was actually, I didn't anticipate that. I was like, no. I didn't think I was like, oh, okay. I don't I thought it was funny. It was but, funny, but yeah, but I'm like at a place in my life where like, that doesn't bother me. Maybe like a few years ago, that would have really bothered me. I'm just like confident in myself. Like, Hey, I'm on this show and you're not. So clearly I'm doing something right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and then, I mean, you know, there was a one comment on I Real Life Made, and my hair was a mess. I'm not even going to lie. My hair was a mess. And, then, <laughs> and like, I didn't think it was going to do that well. And it did pretty well. And someone commented, like, stop focusing on this and worry about your hair. And I actually was a little upset at first because my hair did look bad. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to use this as, like, not only like a lesson, but, like, you know what? My hair does look bad. I need to get my hair done. Like, that's just it. Let's like, leave it at that. <laughs> wow someone told me you know like they didn't have to, the, the delivery was bad but <laughs> <laughs> I can appreciate honesty and that was an honest comment oh my god but for like every troll there's like what 50 great comments or more yeah. and looking at those always makes me feel so great they're like oh I loved it thank you for sharing I'm inspired I'm like oh my gosh like People are really like resonating with this and just love my home and me and I'm being my authentic self and I'm being accepted as my authentic self. And that's just like such a great feeling for me. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's amazing that you're able to keep that mindset. I think that's wonderful. I also think that it's interesting that when you see the trolls most of the time, and I shouldn't even give it this much attention. But when I click their profile, there'll be like this hidden profile. Oh, yeah. Or there'll be a profile that it looks like they created it just then. And so then you go, who are you really? Are you someone yeah. that like you automatically follow me and now you're creating this other thing? So it's oh, like, oh, I never thought about it that way. And then I'm like, are you hiding behind a keyboard? And like they are hiding behind a keyboard. I mean, yes, they know. are. <laughs> yeah. So then I go, okay, you know what? You've got other issues. Like you took the time yeah. to hide somewhere else. You've got other issues. And really anyone who is in the positive mindset space will always say when someone says something negative about you, it's really about them, not you. Yeah. And so I always try to think about that, but mm -hmm. you handled it beautifully. And then your real responding to it was so funny. And I thought that was, it was just handled so well. Yeah. And the troll so, also getting your engagement up. So like, thank I you. Know. Thank, you. <laughs> thank you for commenting. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> I know. It's so funny. It's like, yeah, thank you so much really, for commenting. I really loved it. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I want to get to our 10 rapid fire questions which are never rapid fire. We really need to change the name of it. We always oh, say we need to change the name. Rapid fire, like, what's that show? Family Feud? <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, our whole reason of having this is kind of to also, you know, just to get to know you a little bit better. Okay. Okay. So number one is sunrise or sunset? Sunset, because I am a night person. <laughs> okay. And then my question here, a follow-up is, which do you see from your apartment? Sunrise or sunset? Sunset. Okay. There you uh, go. Yeah. Because your, your patio is, again, amazing. Okay. Number two, pink drink or coffee? Pink drink. I, I knew yeah. you were going to say that. I knew you were going to say <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Number three, entertaining guests or dining out? It depends on who the guests are. <laughs> yeah. 
because I know you said the listed thing that you like to entertain in your yeah. home, mm -hmm. which it's a great uh, space to entertain. Yeah, we always do like a Fourth of July party. We do like an end of the Obviously. summer. We did a Halloween get together. We we're gonna have it out every time we entertain. We always should do it outside because like the inside is small. It's a New York City small apartment, but for Halloween it ended up raining. We were all inside. Didn't end up being too bad actually. But hey, do you do a New Year's Eve? We don't. We're usually traveling around then. I was gonna say, can you see the New Year's Eve stuff from where you are? No, I like, I'll drop. No. I mean, I just wonder if you can see like fireworks and stuff from where you are. Like you know, fireworks from your, uh, you know, a lot of times I'm not even here in New York City. Yeah, I wonder yeah. if you can like from where you are. But anyway, okay. So I'm sorry. What was your answer? So it depends on who the guests are. Okay. <laughs> okay. If they're <laughs> friends, no, I'd rather meet my friends out at dinner because then that's okay. less work for me. Yeah. But yeah, if yeah. it's something like an event, then at my place, like I'd rather have like a real friend party. Like we're going to hang out for like four hours at my place. Yeah. Over the restaurant. But if it's just dinner at a restaurant. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Got it. Okay. Number four, email or handwritten letter. Who am I receiving it from or who am I giving it to? I guess it depends on the situation. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know in general. I don't know that well. Email. If it's someone that is very close with me, handwritten letter. Yeah. We wanted to take a pause for a second to tell you once again about how much we love Sugar Wish. If you're a regular listener, Sugar Wish isn't new to you. You already know how much we adore the fact that we count on Sugar Wish to send gifts to people. Why? Because it's easy. Yes. It's a time saver. Yes. You know the recipient is going to love it because they choose what they want. That's right. And it's not a gift that's going to take up space because it's edible. Yes. What's not to love? You forgot something. What's that? You save money because we have a code to share with our listeners. Oh my gosh, that's right. Use code Betty White. That's all caps, one word, Betty White, to save $7 off your gift to someone. We also have the link in the show notes. Yep. Whether you're gifting someone candy, snacks, tea, coffee, wine, or some dog treats to one lucky pup, that code works to save. Sugar Wish always saves the day. Okay, so number five, totally because you're in the city and I was just curious, would you rather drive or walk? I guess ride or walk. Like Uber? Yeah, or taxi or subway uh or whatever. Definitely Uber, but my husband is so frugal. He wants us to walk everywhere. <laughs> He's like, it's only 20 blocks. And I'm like, I am not. <laughs> because on your stories, you're walking a lot. Yeah, that's not even a lot, a lot here. Like, I don't walk a lot compared to a lot of people. Like, most people I know walk way more than me. Okay. Yeah, I'm just walking to the train station, really. That's just like three blocks away. Or to my son's daycare, which is a block and a half away. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, that's not bad. That's no, not bad yeah. at all. Okay. So I actually um, live in my neighborhood. I work in my neighborhood and my son goes to school across the street. So like, oh, that's pretty good. That is really good. <laughs> okay. That's not bad at all. Nope. And there's a grocery store across the street and CVS downstairs. What? My, I know. <laughs> my son's pediatrician is like four blocks away. My eyeglass people are a block away. I have everything here. I don't oh. need to. Leave. I can't remember the last time I left the neighborhood. <laughs> That's amazing. There's like That's six parks. Places. Yeah. Ah. Oh. There's okay. three parks. <laughs> oh, uh, that's nice. I think this neighborhood is like, has the most dogs per capita in America. Actually. Oh. Wow. <laughs> I would love it here. Yeah, she would. <laughs> okay. Would you rather read a book or watch a movie? Watch a movie. Okay. Yeah. Number seven, beach vacay or city vacay? Beach, hands down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Number eight, wake up early or sleep late? Sleep late. Okay. <laughs> One of the cutest things ever was, I think this was on your story too, your son saying, <laughs> <laughs> do you need some more time or do you need some? <laughs> oh, Yeah. You need a few moments. You need a few moments. <laughs> You're like, yes. <laughs> yeah, I do. And he's like, okay. And he shuts the door. 
the you know what thing ever. Is to be me and it's like so embarrassing but now i think it's funny i'm like max pretend to be me and he goes i'm trying to sleep <laughs> adorable okay would you rather dine in your kitchen nook area or outside on your patio actually in my nook area because it's so windy on the patio you saw how windy it was when you were yes in your city last time is it always like that on your patio mm, i mean it's not that windy but maybe like 60 percent of the time there's a decent amount of wind what floor are you on if you don't mind we're, we're on seven okay okay yeah. so yeah but we're also on like the corner of the building, so like the wind hits the front and then it moves over to the side. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, I guess I could see that. Okay, number ten, and Jerry thinks that this is super indicative of someone's personality. He can never explain why. We never go through what it means with your answer, so no pressure. <laughs> Ketchup or mustard? Mustard. Uh -huh. And I actually like the mixture of both in certain situations, but if I had to pick, I would say mustard. What do you get on your hot dog? Mustard. Me too. Yep. No ketchup. No. And if I do, if there's French fries and I have the option, I like to do a mixture of both. And I don't know why, but I don't know. It's delicious. I'm going to do that next time. Mm, it is delicious. Yeah. Okay. And then the final most important question for real <laughs> is what does a life well lived mean to you? You know, I didn't really think about this until you, I knew that you're going to ask me. <laughs> and I'm like, hmm, what is, you know, I usually take it day by day. I just try to do my best every day. And like recently I've noticed, I, I always thought the dream was to like get married, have a stable job, have a kid and just stay right there. Uh -huh. Have a house and just be there for the rest of your life. That's it until you die. Yeah. And I'm that I need to push myself out of my comfort zone. Like, I wanted to be in the comfort zone. That was always my goal to be in the comfort zone. And now I'm always pushing myself out of the comfort zone because that's the only way you can grow. And I have to thank you for letting me be on this podcast because this is out of my comfort zone and I'm growing by doing this today. So thank you so much. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> I think that is a great answer. I think too, that we all need to be reminded to get out of our comfort zone because it is comfortable to be in our comfort zone. It's it's less scary. I don't remember who said it. I should probably know that says you should do something scary every day or something that scares you every day. You know, it's easier said than done. But right. Yeah. I think that's a great idea though, to get out of your comfort zone because yeah, if you do stay in, in the same place, I think life could be pretty mundane. Yeah. Mundane, boring. And you don't, you kind of like shut yourself off to like new ideas too. And new experiences and yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, that's great. We're so happy that you were on the podcast, first of all, and so happy that we're your first podcast. It's so exciting. And we cannot thank you enough for being here. Grateful and appreciative. I would love it if you could tell our audience where they can find you. Oh, okay. I'm only on Instagram for right now. My handle is Emily, E-M-I-L-Y dot Offrey, A-U-F-F-R-E-Y on Instagram. Yeah. And I highly encourage everyone to go and follow her if they want to get some home decor inspo, yeah. some positivity, and just a lot of joy in their life. You should definitely go and follow her. So thank you again for being here. Fun. Yeah. Okay. We'll see you soon. Next time we're in New York, we're going to get in touch. Gonna wake up. <laughs> yeah. Wow, Jerry, you really missed out. I mean, she was amazing. Well, yeah. And yeah, I would have loved to have been there for that one. Yeah. Um, I mean, you were on your own adventure. It didn't make it back in time for the recording with Emily. <laughs> no, but um, these things happen sometimes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think we've said it before, but Jerry does get to watch these recordings as they're being edited. So he does get to see the interviews. So he knows exactly what happened. Mm. So it's kind of like you're here. And so you just did get to see the interview. Yeah, I get the recap. And that's just not as good, but it's, it's definitely, all the same stuff. So, you yeah, know, it's definitely not as good. No. <laughs> But it's all the same content, so I get to see what happened and what I missed. Yeah, we so. had a lot of laughs, and 
you know, when you got home that afternoon, I was telling you just how Emily lit a spark in me after that conversation. I just felt like I had spent time with a kindred spirit for a while. It was just wonderful. And what you all didn't hear is that and it's probably good because no one probably would have tuned in as long is that Emily and I spent about two hours together, <laughs> not including the episode, <laughs> just chatting about other things we had in common and helping each other out in this content creation world. And it was just lovely e meeting her. It was just great. Oh, that sounds great. Yeah. yeah. I knew you, you had spent a lot of time and you sound like you enjoyed every minute of it. Yeah. And how great is it that she brings so much? It's not even just about decor tips and tricks and all that. It really is about bringing personal vibe and I don't even know the word, but just so much I don't know. Just like she wants to bring so much of her like motivation for her son and affirmations for herself and things that remind her of just really positive things in her home. Yeah, I thought that part was really neat, too. Mm -hmm. And what you guys didn't get to see was how cute her dog was. <laughs> right. And of course. They did get to hear him for a little bit. Yeah. Bit. But yeah, he was super cute. And her dog, you know, you guys can see on Instagram Reels is how a lot of her home is very functional for dogs. Like some of the mats and the things that she puts down in her home. They're very kid and pet friendly, easy to clean, all of that stuff. So, yeah, it was just a really, really great episode, and I just loved it. And someone we could resonate with. Yeah. In indeed. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, another lovely episode in the books. Mm -hmm. And if this episode resonated with you, or if you know someone who would benefit from the knowledge that Emily was dropping, we would love it if you would share it. Sharing is caring, friends. As always, you can find us at ArnerAdventures.com, on Instagram, at ArnerAdventures, also linked in the show notes. So until next time, enjoy the journey that you're on. We're wishing you lots of adventures. Bye! Bye. <laughs> <laughs>